morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here, pastor at St. John's. Uh, on for our daily devotion. I'm going to apologize. I'm a couple minutes tardy today. My uh, my apologies for that, but um, we'll take a moment to greet folks as they sign in today, and we'll have our time of daily devotion. So I hope many of you will be able to join us. Take a moment and just wait for folks to sign in today, and I'll greet folks as they uh, make a comment and let me know that they're here. And then here in a minute or so, we'll get started with our devotion time. Several of you are here. Hi, Jenny. Good morning to you. Scared you for a moment. Thought you forget. Thought I forgot. And no, I hadn't forgot. I was actually waiting. Um, my uh, our our cleaning folks are here, and they were upstairs this morning, working in my office area, trying to get all of that done before they moved downstairs. And so I was a little delayed by by trying to get around them. So my apologies. But Chris and Barbara, glad you're here this morning. Hi Shirley. Hi Marcella. Glad you are all here today. Hi, Barbara Paddock. Glad you're here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So glad for all of you that are faithful and, and join in on this every day. It's a, a joy and a pleasure to be a part of this with you. I enjoy it. I hope that you uh, find it fulfilling and nurturing in some kind of way or, or a good part of your spiritual disciplines, but... For those of you who are here, by the way, we're going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 40. So if you want to find your Bible and turn to the uh, prophet Isaiah uh, and the Isaiah scroll, chapter 40. Morning, Jack. How are you this morning? Glad to have you with us today. Wait about another 30 seconds or so, see if anybody else signs in and says good morning, and then we'll get started with our devotion time. As I mentioned a moment ago, Isaiah chapter 40, we're going to read verses 28 to 31, so if you want to find that. In the Isaiah scroll, this comes under the heading, Power for the Weary. So you might think of that for just a moment, Power for the Weary. All right, Isaiah chapter 40, beginning in the 28th verse, here is what the prophet wrote. Don't you know, or haven't you heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the exhausted. Youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. Our author today is Berthel Levistus Chittick from St. Martin. Uh, and the scripture verse that they picked for their focus was verse 31. They will wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And here is the um, devotion that's offered for us today. I hate waiting. Any of you in that category as well? I mean, those first three words of that devotion that, that fit you. I hate waiting. For me, waiting is wasting time. I want the plane to take off once I am seated. I expect the server to bring the food soon after I place my order at a restaurant. Waiting makes me feel angry, frustrated, even hopeless. After my home was damaged by Hurricane Irma, my nephew said he would handle the repairs. But after I wait, had waited two weeks, he still had not begun. Having little damage to my home, I thought my repairs would happen fast. But that was not the case. I had to wait. But as I waited, 
I learned that through the prophet Isaiah, the Lord tells us that waiting can be a good thing. The prophet says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Shifting my attitude from one of impatiently waiting to one of waiting upon the Lord has taught me that God is working while I am waiting. This perspective has opened my eyes to the many gifts my Heavenly Father has given me since I learned to wait. These gifts include renewed strength and purpose for my life. God works on a different timetable than ours. If we are open to open as we wait, God can bless and shape us into the people God wants us to be. Um, I used to know, or I know a person, um, retired many, many years ago from the Dade County Fire and Rescue in South Miami. He was an engineer, drove a fire truck for for them. And uh, he, he, you know, was notorious at tailgating. He was really bad at it. He was uh, an expert at driving with his right foot on the accelerator and his left foot on the brake, but he just he was very impatient. I, I remember whenever we'd be at a stoplight, his his comment would be, you know, half of my life is wasted just sitting at these stoplights. You know, just an impatient kind of personality. Wanted things to constantly be moving and and moving at the pace and the direction that he wanted them to be moving at. I'm not sure if. If any of you are like that, if you are an impatient personality, you know, expects things to be, um, you know, there a little bit more readily available, quickly available, those kinds of things. Um, I myself tend not to be um, an impatient personality in those kinds of ways. I have a tendency to be fairly patient for a lot of things. I can be impatient um, in other circumstances. Uh, those typically deal with family members, um, you know, the, the kind of thing than anything else. But when it comes to circumstances around me, I'm not one to to readily become anxious and impatient about circumstances. So in the middle of all that we're experiencing right now with COVID-19 and everything that's just kind of frustrating about it, um, and as much as I would really like for us all to be back and gathered together in worship and things for be to, to be normal, um, I, I find myself not being impatient about that, though, um, that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to practice as much of a non-anxious presence and be as patient as I possibly can with the circumstances, knowing that somewhere in the future we'll be reunited as a community of faith. And when we do, we'll be able to share our stories with one another. We'll be able to tell about the testing of our faith or, or the trials and the tribulations that we've gone through. We'll be able to tell about the blessings of what it meant. You know, I think about my um, daughter and my son-in-law. Uh, you know, with, with Brooke and Matt having Chloe in January and how quickly things, you know, after Brooke's maternity leave, she was actually back at school, I think only one or two weeks at the most, and then schools closed down because of COVID-19. And they've had all of this period of time since then to be able to spend together and, and nurture and watch their little girl grow up. Yesterday was her seven-month birthday, right? And so they've had this time as a blessing, you know, to be able to just spend with her and watch her um, and not really have, you know, an, an, a devastating economic circumstance or something like that. So it's been good for them, right? And so some of this may be for us a blessing. Some of us might come out of the other side of this and count it a blessing in our lives. I'm not sure, right? But I know this much. I'm not going to try to impatiently push us as a community of faith through this season. We'll do all that we can to take our time, to be smart about this, uh, to be intuitive about it and listen for God's spirit to move us, um, to listen to the experts, all those kinds of things. We'll, we'll use those tools that are available to us to make the wisest decision we can and try to figure out how to negate our impatience. I hope you'll join me in that as well, that you'll be supportive of it so that in, you know, the years to come, 
we'll be able to tell a, a good story about our congregation, how we held together as a group, how we patiently waited upon the Lord in the middle of a season where we were disconnected physically from one another, how we maintained our unity and our bond in the spirit and the love of Christ through Zoom and all of this kind of crazy stuff, but that we'll be able to tell wonderful stories of a blessing because we patiently waited through this season and this time. That's a good thing for us to learn because you know what? There'll be other circumstances, other circumstances that will arise in our lives where we're going to need to patiently wait upon the Lord. We need to learn that skill if we haven't already. This might be the prime opportunity for that. So I hope that you'll take a moment to pause and pray and think. What are you feeling right now? Are you feeling kind of okay with the circumstance that we're in? Or are you being impatient about it? And in what ways? And how is that impatience pressing you towards something that could blind you to a blessing that you want to um, want to experience or can experience? So uh, let's take a moment to pause and let's take an opportunity to pray, friends. So gracious God, we ask that you teach us to wait upon you and teach us what it means to be patient with the circumstances that we find ourselves in. Maybe in this moment of being patient, you can open us up and help us to see the ways in which you might be blessing us and shaping us, and that we'll be able to tell the stories of these things when we find ourselves back together as a community. Help us to know that you are always looking, always, always looking for and working for our good. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Well, I hope this brings a little bit of assurance and peace to you today. Um, we'll be back on tomorrow. Don't forget at our time at 1145. I will try to be on time and not tardy as I was today. My apologies again for that, but we'll look forward to that. So uh, I want to invite you also at the end of this to take an opportunity to share this on your own Facebook page. Would appreciate you doing that because people in your circle of friends may be an opportunity to also share in our time of devotion. So if you would do that, that would be great. Otherwise, I hope you have a, a blessed rest of your Wednesday. And I will look forward to visiting with you tomorrow. Have a great day, friends.